just like Barkley. All right, week 13 in the NFL. I'll get through my picks here quickly. I'm running on about two hours fucking sleep, so I'm really fucking tired today. Uh, Chicago, minus three and a half on the road at Detroit. I believe it's the first game of Thanksgiving uh, Thursday tomorrow. So Chicago, three of Trubisky's 10 TD pass have come versus Detroit. I think Khalil Mack just feasts in this game. Detroit's probably without Matthew Stafford again. And Driscoll, sorry, I couldn't remember their backup quarterback's name, is questionable with a hamstring. So they could have some undrafted rookie QB in their starting at quarterback for Detroit. They are the 30th ranked pass D and the 24th ranked run D. I think that sets up well for the Bears defense. They're one of the best high scoring defenses in the NFL. I forget where exactly they sit, but I know they're in the top. And Tyreek Cohen should be able to have a good game against Detroit. It's just awful defense. I think the Bears run away with this. Well, not run away with this game. I think they win by a touchdown here. Something like 20 to 13 or 21 14 or something like that. 24 17. Uh, Buffalo at Dallas. The Bills have the third ranked defense in the NFL. They should be able to pose fits for Dallas's offense, who has been struggling lately. And neither one of these teams have really beat a team above 500. The Bills are 8 and 3. The boys are 6 and 5, holding on to a one game lead over the Eagles in the NFC East. And this is a big game for Dallas because of the head-to-head -head matchups. If Philly were to be able to beat Dallas in Week 16 coming up, then these these games against Buffalo are huge. They, I, I can't remember how it breaks down who has the advantage right now, but Dallas really needs to get a win over Buffalo. I think they're going to eke out a win, but I don't think they're going to cover the 6.5-point spread. They are 6.5-point favorites. I like the Bills to cover the spread. I think the boys get the win in the end. I think Zeke and Prescott will do enough to edge out the Bills in the final seconds of the game. New Orleans at Atlanta. New Orleans is 6.5 point road favorites. They are mad, mad, hated division rival. Just beat them a couple weeks ago. Ended their six game win streak. And Michael Thomas, oh my goodness. Is this kid phenomenal or what? I, I love the Saints to win this game. I think Atlanta does cover though. But just to read just something, Michael Thomas, 10 catches, 100 yards in three straight games. He's got 104 receptions and 1,242 receiving yards. And by the way, the Saints can clinch a playoff spot with a win over Atlanta. That would seal the division for them, thereby being the becoming the first team to clinch a playoff spot this year with a win. So I think they win, but I don't think they're going to win by that touchdown or more. So I like the Falcons to cover. Green Bay, six and a half point road favorites against the Giants. The Giants are just awful. How healthy is Saquon really? They're bad defense. 26 ranked pasty. 22nd against the run. 29th in points allowed per game. I think there's a couple teams that set up well. The Packers and the Rams this week. Because a lot of times in the NFL, any, any team that's around 500 or better, after they get embarrassed the previous week, they tend to bounce back and come up good and show up and get a win the following week. And I think that was just what the Packers needed. I think they are getting too lackadaisical, focusing on just walking into the playoffs instead of what their issues are and what they need to shore up before they get into the playoffs. I think Green Bay bounces back huge this week. I like them win by 10 plus points over the Giants in New York. Washington is plus 10 at Carolina. Carolina 10 point home favorites. I don't think Washington has enough to stop Carolina, especially Christian McCaffrey. I think he should be up there in the MVP discussion, personally. A very, very weak run to D for Carolina. Sorry, I'm having trouble speaking this morning. Two straight L's. I think Carolina takes out their frustration from them. Two losses on Washington. I think they win big. 14 plus points. I'll take Carolina as the home favorites. San Fran plus six on the road to Baltimore. Everybody knows you've been watching my videos. I am all about Baltimore this year. I've loved them from day one. I got a $5 bet at 81 
to one odds on Lamar Jackson for MVP way back. The 81 to 1 odds should tell you how fucking long ago I placed that wager. It pays me just over 400 bucks on a $5 fucking just what the hell bet because I like the kids so much going into this year. They're already offering me almost a $300 early payout. I think it's like two. 250, so I had a 250 payout or something early payout. Bet365 is where I bet on, and that's where I get all my point spread numbers on the day I do my videos. I, I, I think Baltimore is just going to run away with this. San Fran's one weakness has been against mobile quarterbacks. Two weeks ago against Arizona, Arizona almost upset them because of Kyler Murray and Kenyon Drake's running ability, especially though the mobile quarterback with Kyler Murray. He really posed fits. For the 49ers stout defense. I think Lamar will do enough. Mark Ingram will do enough. And I think Baltimore cruises to a touchdown win over San Fran at home. And this is the end of a long road trip for the 49ers and an early 1 o'clock Eastern start cross country. So I really like Baltimore to win this week. Again, I'll be putting a lot of money on them again this week. They've been winning me a lot of money this year so far. It's been nice. Tennessee, I will also be putting a lot of money on this week. They are two and a half point road underdogs at Indianapolis. D. Henry, Derek Henry, man, that, that dude is on fire. And Tannehill is four and one since he's been starting for the Titans. I think the Titans walk away with this game and really become a threat in their division. Philadelphia, 10 point road favorites in Miami. Don't have to say much about this game. Uh, Jay Ajayi going up against his former team, if it means anything still, it has been a few years, what was it, 2017 when he got traded to Philly, so you know, if it means something to him, watch out for him, ground and pound all day, Miami's run D is absolutely atrocious, if Philly doesn't try to run the ball all game long, hopefully Jordan Howard's back, uh, Man, I, I just I I will lose my mind if they don't try to run the game, run the ball in this game versus the Dolphins. Carson Wentz has looked god awful the last two weeks. He's missing easy gimme throws. I don't care about the wind. It was windy against New England and uh, last week against Seattle, but not enough to affect some of them porous throws he's been making. But the Eagles have a soft schedule. They got Miami this week. Uh, Washington Giants Dallas or da or Giants Washington Dallas then they close with the Giants again soft soft schedule That's why the game for Dallas is so important against Buffalo too because of how weak the Eagles schedule is remaining So I'll take Philly in the 10 points on the road in Miami Tampa Bay the Bucks going into Jacksonville as one point underdogs This is really a uh, Tampa Bay is a horrid running team and the Jags are Horrible run defense. Uh, who turns the ball over less? Marietta or uh, Nick Foles? Uh, the Jags have given up, what is it? I think I wrote it down. Yes, yeah, 75 points in their last two games. I think the Bucks will do enough on offense. They seem to always, or Winston, sorry, I said Marietta earlier. But I think Winston will do enough in this game. No matter how many turnovers he has, they always seem to be able to put up points, and I don't think the Jags will be able to keep up with them. I like Tampa to outrate win this game and cover the spread. New York Jets on the road to host to play against the winless Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are three and a half point home underdogs, worst team in the NFL, second worst scoring offense. I think Le'Veon Bell finally gets his first 100-yard rushing game of the season this week, and the Jets walk into Cincinnati and come away with a convincing win of at least a touchdown or more. Cleveland, two-point favorites on the road at Pittsburgh. Like, just a couple of weeks ago, everybody remembers, if you're a football fan, you fucking remember that nasty, nasty incident between Mason Rudolph and Miles Garrett. Uh, I want, like... Mason Rudolph looks like he's face masking, trying to kick Garrett in the nuts. Garrett whips off his helmet. Who knows what is said? There's speculation here and there. I'm not going to speculate on that shit. But Garrett ends up swinging it. Rudolph's helmet, hitting him. Thank God it was the fucking softest part of that helmet, or that could have split him wide open. This game just could be flat out nasty. I don't think Rudolph's playing. I believe he's been benched, but man. Man, the coaching ability in Pittsburgh has been phenomenal. They just keep winning games they're not supposed to. Everything tells me, take Cleveland here. I've been tossing. 
flipping coins, doing everything, and I'm just like, when I make the video, I'll decide and I'll make my choice who wins this game. Baker Mayfield has 13 interceptions and 14 touchdown passes on the year. Not good numbers. I'm going to roll with Pittsburgh. They just keep on winning. I, I don't know how they keep doing it. They're at home. I, I'll take them as a small home underdog. LA Rams, like a touchdown earlier, they are in Arizona. He's coming off their bye. The Rams are three-point road favorites. They got embarrassed. I think that they could... Usually, like I said about Green Bay, the teams usually bounce back when they're back when they're 500 or better teams the following week. We'll see what Kyler Murray can do against the Rams this week. This one's another toss-up. I think that the Rams win a field goal game, and if it's a three-point game, I will take Arizona just because it'll be a push either way because my number is three. So I will go with the home dogs and pick L.A. to win the game. Oakland, nine and a half point road dogs at Kansas City. Kansas City coming off their bye week, getting healthy. They are so good offensively. I know everybody's going to be all over Kansas City, but I am on Kansas City to win the game. But I like the Raiders to cover this game a lot. I'll be putting a lot of money on the Raiders against the spread and the Chiefs to win the game outright. I think Jacobs will do enough against the Chiefs. Horrible, horrible run defense. And I think that'll keep the Chiefs offense off the field and it will be enough for Oakland to keep this game within a touchdown. I do not think Kansas City will win by 10 or more points, but I do think they come out with the win. I think the run D of Kansas City is going to be enough to keep Oakland covering the spread. LA Chargers at Denver, 26th ranked red zone offense. Here's the LA Chargers, and Denver is a second-ranked red zone defense. And for that reason, I believe defense wins football games. I will pick Denver as three-point home dogs in this one. And I'm actually going to pick Denver to win this game outright. The Chargers are up and down. These teams are pretty evenly matched. Four and seven are the Chargers. Three and eight are the Broncos. I'll just roll with the home underdogs. I think it's a just a... I'm forced to make a pick, so I'm picking Denver as the small home dogs. New England, three and a half point road favorites in Houston. Houston's D is awful. They're 29th in sacks, 31st third down defense, and 32nd red zone D. New, in New England is showing a lot of struggles. I don't know if they're getting everybody back and healthy on their offensive line yet or not. If they have a healthy O-line, I think that the Patriots will win this game going away by a touchdown or more. But with question marks, and I haven't seen the injury report, I am still picking New England to win this game. I'll pick them by a field goal because Deshaun Watson is a phenomenal player. And I think Houston will be able to do enough on offense to keep this game within a field goal, even though their defense will probably let them down. So New England to win the game, Houston to cover. Monday Nighter, what a game. 8-3 Minnesota Vikings on the road to play the 9-2 Seattle Seahawks. Seattle is three-point home favorites. Can Seattle's 29th ranked D stop Cousins, Thielen, Diggs, and company? That is the question for me. Or can Russell Wilson do what he's been doing all year? And that is finding a way to will his team to victory. And I'm going to roll with, again, a small home favorite, small home dogs. I love taking those plays. I love playing on them on the point spread. I'm going to take Seattle to win this game and cover the three-point spread at home. That's my Week 13 picks. Peace.